Meet Dr. Walter Lankowski, one of the best examples of a well-rounded, you-can-have-it-all kind of character in the Marvel Universe. He was an honor student at the University of Calgary and went to Pennsylvania State University on a football scholarship, earning a degree in physics. After that, he became a professional football player, playing for the Green Bay Packers and earned a ton of money. And if that wasn't enough, after retiring, he continued his graduate studies at MIT. Yet despite all his educational and professional accomplishments, what he is truly known for in the Marvel Universe is his alter ego, a huge, orange, furry beast. When I was a little boy, I had an irrational fear of apes. Well, okay, not apes per se like gorillas or chimpanzees, although those guys are actually very vicious. Look it up. But more mythological, fictional, or possibly real creatures that look similar to apes. Furry humanoid monsters like Grendel from Beowulf, King Kong, or Bigfoot. It got so bad that my older sister, who was a psychology major, had to resort to basic hypnotism to help me get over my fears. Anyway, her simple hypnotism trick worked so well that moving forward, not only did I get over my fears, I ended up getting quite fascinated by these creatures, which is most likely one of the reasons I gravitated towards the less popular Marvel superhero team from Canada, Alpha Flight, which included Walter Lankowski, aka Sasquatch. I first learned about Sasquatch when I came upon an entry in the resource book, The Marvel Universe Book of the Dead, for another character named Snowbird, who was also another prominent member of Alpha Flight. Anyway, her history and that of Walter Lankowski are so intertwined that it would be quite impossible to talk about one without the other. While the Marvel Universe is chock full of interesting character background or origin stories, the tale of Walter Lankowski, Snowbird, and the Sasquatch is probably one of my favorites for its uniqueness and just plain weirdness. Now before I go any further, just a warning. This is a rather long and convoluted story with so many side stories intertwined. You know, basic comic storytelling. So I'll try to do my best and keep it as straightforward as possible. Okay, so first we have Dr. Walter Lankowski. Like I said at the start of this episode, he went to Pennsylvania State University on a scholarship. It was during his time here that he met and befriended another future doctor named Bruce Banner. Hmm, where did I hear that name before? Anyway, they bonded over their common fascination with gamma radiation. And years later, when Walter discovered that Banner had turned into the Hulk through a gamma radiation related accident, he sought to duplicate the process under more controlled circumstances. With his research backed by the super secret Canadian government agency Department H, Lankowski was somewhat successful in replicating Banner's gamma radiation experiment on himself. But instead of turning into another green Hulk, his alternate form turned out to be more bestial with orange fur. He assumed that his close proximity to the Aurora Borealis was the main reason for the different transformation results from Banner, but it turned out that he was wrong. Dead wrong. Now for the second part of this story, we're gonna have to do a little, okay, humongous time jump into the past. According to ancient northern folklore, several thousand years ago there was a great ongoing battle between the Inuit gods of the north and the mystical great beasts for control of the world. In the end, the leader of the great beasts, Tundra managed to seal the northern gods away in another dimension, rendering them incapable of protecting the earth. But in order to ensure the earth's safety, the Inuit goddess of the northern lights, Nilvana, used clever trickery to bargain with Tundra to allow her to return to earth in exchange for her godly powers, making her human. The plan was for Nilvana to find a suitable partner, which she did in a man named Richard Easton, and mate with him to produce a child who would grow to continue the battle against the evil great beasts. Their child, named Narya, was placed under the care of a Sarsi mystic, Michael Two Young Men, as she rapidly aged into the hero and team member of Alpha Flight, codenamed Snowbird. Two Young Men also joined the team under the alias Shaman. Anyway, back to Lankowski. After initially gaining control of his new superpowers to the point of being able to switch back and forth between his human and bestial form at will and maintaining his human personality in both forms, he too joined Alpha Flight, taking on the name Sasquatch after the creature of Canadian myth. Unfortunately, Lankowski's control over his beastly side would not last long. As time passed, he found it more and more difficult to return to his human form, and in his bestial form, he started losing control and became more… savage. As it turned out, it wasn't Lankowski's gamma experiment that turned him into the Sasquatch per se. In reality, his device actually opened up an interdimensional gateway between the Earth and the realm of the great beasts, and one of them, Taranak, the embodiment of death and decay, managed to escape and merge with Lankowski, 
causing him to take the Great Beast's form instead of some gamma-powered Hulk. And unbeknownst to Lankowski, Taranak was slowly but surely taking over his mind, body, and soul. Eventually, Taranak took full control of Lankowski and his Sasquatch form, and Snowbird, doing what she was raised to do, used her powers of shapeshifting to transform into a white Sasquatch herself and defeat Taranak by ripping out Walter's heart, instantly killing him. Ouch. Fortunately, after the death of his mortal body, Lankowski's soul managed to survive, wandering around the crossroads of reality for a time, searching for a new host. During Lankowski's absence from the team though, life moved on for Snowbird and the rest of Alpha Flight. She eventually met, fell in love with, and married a police officer named Doug Thompson, and they had a child. Unfortunately, here we go again, the pairing of a demigod and a human resulted in a complicated birthing process of their child. While the birth was successful, the magical energies needed for the birth resulted in the release of yet another evil spirit named Pestilence, who then took over the body of the newborn baby and set off to destroy Alpha Flight. While the heroes managed to initially defeat him, Pestilence escaped in possession of Snowbird's child. In an effort to track Pestilence down, Snowbird's husband, Doug, fell victim to Pestilence's plague and died. And when the rest of Alpha Flight finally caught up with the malevolent being, sensing that the purity of Snowbird's child was slowly destroying him, Pestilence tricked an enraged Snowbird to turn into her Sasquatch form, an embodiment of the great beasts, which allowed him to take control of her. He then commanded her to kill her own son in order to free him. Forced with the impossible decision to basically destroy Snowbird, her ally and friend in order to stop her from murdering her son, Alpha Flight leader Vindicator hesitated for just a split second, which unfortunately was enough time for Snowbird to tragically murder her own son, right before she herself was killed by Vindicator's plasma blast. Since she died in her Sasquatch form, her body did not revert back and was buried in that state, where it lay waiting to be repossessed by Pestilence who apparently escaped again from their last encounter. You just can't keep a good ghost down. And he continued his attack on Alpha Flight in his new deadlier form, this time in their own home. Okay, so before we go any further, I'd like to take a quick side trip and introduce a previous minor Alpha Flight villain who inadvertently plays a significant role in this current story. Meet Alexander Thorne, aka Smart Alec evil super genius who, in a bid to expand his mind even more, steals Shaman's magical mystery medicine pouch and peers inside. This foolish act basically robs him of his sanity, essentially killing him. And in the hopes of finding a way to restore him somewhere down the line, Shaman basically shrinks Smart Alec's body and stuffs him in his pouch for safekeeping. So with that in mind, back to the main story. Aside from a little dead body, guess what else happened to be residing inside Shaman's mystical magical pouch looking for a suitable host to possess? Why, Dr. Lankowski of course. How convenient is that? Anyway, using Smart Alec's tiny body to escape Shaman's pouch, he then proceeds to transfer his soul into the larger and more battle-suitable box armor, another member of the team with yet another colorful story involving rebuilding lost limbs with dead rotting human flesh and tissue. Another story for another time. I know, I know, but like I said, this is classic comic book storytelling with so many side-related storylines. So let's just stay focused on the main plot of this episode. Anyway, like I said, in a game of musical bodies, Lankowski transfers his soul from the tiny smart Alec into the box armor in order to battle the pestilence-possessed Sasquatch. Talk about role reversal. Unfortunately for Alec, after serving out his purpose in the plot, his body was crushed in the ensuing battle. In the end, Lankowski managed to defeat Pestilence by overloading the Sasquatch body with energy from the box armor, forcing Pestilence out and right into Shaman's medicine pouch where they successfully imprisoned him, provided Shaman remembered not to stuff any more tiny bodies in there. With Pestilence out of the picture, Lankowski finally transferred his soul back into the empty Sasquatch body, where ideally his story would happily end coming back full circle as Sasquatch again. But of course, this being comics, this wasn't the case. Things weren't quite exactly the same with his new body. Aside from sporting white fur, Lankowski discovered that there was one other major difference from his old body. Since this new Sasquatch was actually his fallen comrade Snowbird, when he reverted back into human form, he turned back into a woman. So under this new identity of Wanda Lankowski, 
she continued to serve as an important member of Alpha Flight through its various incarnations. Eventually though, Wanda would revert back to Walter and his original orange-colored Sasquatch through the help of Snowbird, who temporarily returned as a spirit and shape-shifted her physical body one last time into the original form of Walter Lankowski. And just so you know, things also ultimately worked out for Snowbird as she was also resurrected a few years later through a combination of science and magic by the terrorist organization Advanced Idea Mechanics, or AIM, for their own evil purposes. She's eventually rescued by her teammates and rejoins Alpha Flight. And so to this day, both Walter Lankowski as Sasquatch and Snowbird remain important members of most modern iterations of Alpha Flight. And with that ends the tale of the Doctor, the Demigod, and the Great Beast. As twisted, tragic, and convoluted as it is, it's one of my favorites to this day, and one of the reasons why Alpha Flight remains as one of my favorite superhero teams of all time. So are there any other fans of this beautiful shape-shifting demigod Narya, or the good doctor turned great beast Walter Lankowski? Anyone else left hanging with the mention of the story of Box and the rotting body parts? I promise, I'll get to that twisted tale eventually. Let me know in the comments below, and tell me your story. Thanks for watching Stories from the Toy Shelf. If you enjoyed this story, why not check another one? And please help me out by giving me a like or comment. And subscribe to the channel to get notifications whenever I upload a new story. Until the next one.